Good evening. This is QTV United News coming to you from our studios on Keraba Avenue and I'm Asma Uba. Thanks for joining us here at the main news headlines. At a press conference on Monday organized by the Ministry of Information ahead of Gambia's hosting of the OIC summit, government ministers and the chief executive officer of the OIC Gambia Secretariat updated the media on OIC projects and Gambia's readiness to host the summit. As preparations for the OIC summit in the Gambia intensify, QSEL's Chief Technology Officer Ahmad Jha Monday stressed the company's preparedness to offer delegates innovative quality services. The Nigerian contingent of the ECOWAS mission in the Gambia on Saturday held a medical outreach, counseling sessions and pre presentation of food items to Mile 2 Central Prison. The SOS Children's Villages on Friday commenced their Maiden Youth Can Network Camp, bringing together 80 young people from various children's villages in the Gambia. The National Center for Arts and Culture held a day-long capacity building forum for 50 festival organizers on event planning and management. Those and other stories coming up, do stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. At a press conference on Monday organized by the Ministry of Information ahead of the Gambia's hosting of the OIC Summit, the Minister of Works and uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the OIC Gambia Secretariat updated the media on OIC projects and Gambia full readiness to host the summit. QTV's Mumudulamin Choi has been covering the summit and he has the latest. It is five days to the OIC Summit, bringing to a climax five years of preparation to host the world's second largest gathering of world leaders. After several postponements, the organizers now assure the public and the world of Gambia's full readiness to host the prestigious event. The CEO of the Gambia OIC Secretariat, Yankuba Diba, gives a report of government's preparatory efforts for the big event. In terms of transportation, I want to tell you currently we have well over 400 vehicles parked at the GCCI uh, trade fair center. Gambia government has bought 100 brand new SUVs and Mercedes Benz. That is enough to, to, to cater for all our, uh, our heads of state. In addition, a friendly country has also given us 100 vehicles. They are all parked at the GCCI. Thirdly, the Gambia government has given us over almost 100 million to rent vehicles. So we have additional 100 vehicles, including baggage trucks, pickup trucks, ambulances. They are all packed at GCCI. The only bit of a challenge reported at the press conference was that the Banjul International Airport does not have an adequate parking space for the aircrafts flying into the Gambia. CEO Diva announces an agreement between Senegal and the Gambia governments for some aircrafts to park at the Leopold Seda Senghor Airport in Dakar at no cost. The first flight, due this evening, is from Saudi Arabia with a delegation of over 300. This summit is 100% funded by the government of the Gambia. And I want this to go on record. Currently, the Gambia government has, within this year, given us well over 400 million to, 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 make, to be able to um, uh, um, organize this summit. In terms of accommodation, there has been, uh, of course, rumors that <laughs> some of our guests are going to stay out of this country. I think that's not only uh, fallacious, but it's lovable. Mm -hmm. We already have more base space than we can even utilize. Upgrading our road infrastructure, building a venue for the event and a VVIP lounge form a significant component of Gambia's readiness to host the summit. Additionally, the infrastructural developments also include the construction of 50 kilometers of roads in the Greater Banjul area. Work is in progress, and on completion, the roads will constitute a major facelift to the transport sector of the country. The contractors are well ahead of schedule, and uh, they have uh, laid asphalt uh, far beyond traffic light, and then uh, we are now about to reach the um, Radio Gambia Junction. So. Lights have also been fixed, and then also, which is of course the, the uh, solar lights, have been fixed uh, on the road. And um, by August, which is the last I mean, uh, month of uh, the contract for Battle Hard in Phase 1 and 2, um, asphalting would be done, double layer asphalting will be done from end to end, 
and uh, also markings on the road will be completed, route markings will be done, and then also all the roads will be fixed. The work minister reports that beyond the OIC roads, government is currently constructing over 600 kilometers of roads across the country. Significant progress has been made and the works are due to complete soon. The CEO of the OIC Secretariat stresses that the summit is not open to the public and it is strictly meant for government delegations and other invited guests. The newly appointed Minister of Information, Dr. Ismail Assise, in his statement, expresses his ministry's plan to host press briefings every two weeks to update the public on government's programs and projects. Today we have work, C CEO uh, Secretariat is here because of the Recent, you've seen the president was out on Saturday looking at inspecting all the road works just to give you updates as to the status of that, but also the state of preparedness for the OIC conference. So next, in two weeks' time, we'll get another technical ministry minister to come. The summit will begin its activities this week with the conference of senior officials followed by Council of Ministers meeting of the OIC member countries before the meeting of heads of state from 4th to 5th May. Mahmoud Lamin, Choi TV News. As preparations for the OIC summit in the Gambia intensify, QSEL's Chief Technology Officer Ahmad Jha Monday stressed the company's preparedness to offer delegates innovative quality services. He was speaking during a site visit to the Sadauda Kairabajawa International Conference Center, the venue for the summit. And Sumane Sunyasi has more. Hosting the second largest convergence of global leaders poses an immense challenge for the country, requiring a concerted national effort by all stakeholders to make it a success. The use of technology has become inevitable in event management and the country's leading GSM company QCell with its 5G network is incomparably placed to provide innovative technological services to enhance the conference experience of the expected high-powered delegates. As the world's leaders and their delegates begin to descend on Banjul, QCell's chief technology officer Ahmad Jha, having toured the conference center, says the pioneering roots of QCell in providing innovative and high-quality services puts QCEL on a firm footing to deliver for the delegates the best GSM experience in the Gambia. Um, we are just so excited that uh, we are hosting the conference as a nation here in the Gambia. And uh, as QCEL, um, we've been preparing for this for a long time uh, because we know how important this is. So even before the launch of the OIC, uh, we have already installed um, everything here from uh, 2G, 3G, 4G network and 5G. Um, and we've also made sure that uh, the, uh, the hot zones around Senegambia area, all the way from the VIP lounge at the airport to the state house, we even have 5G already installed and ready. And uh, we've also committed in a way that we have installed high capacity uh, technology to be able to, um, to host all the guests that are going to be present here. He also shared with us some of the latest facilities they have installed at the Sadauda Kairaba Jawara International Conference Centre ahead of the highly anticipated summit. Once they get here, they will get to experience uh, the network. I know Gambia is uh, one of the smallest countries, but as far as the technology is concerned, uh, I'm sure it's going to surprise a lot of them. And, you know, we have packaged a lot to ensure that people that are coming here, they will not be disappointed. And uh, this is our promise to all the Gambians and to all the guests, you know, once you come in here, you know, all the data needs you have, because we know that some of the guests that are going to be coming, uh, they might be recording, they might be even having some video conferencing outside. So we want to make sure that whilst they're here, they are not going to have any issues when it comes to the internet, when they need to make voice calls, you know, SMS. So we have made sure that we've packed, you know, to the fullest. He reiterated QCEL's resolve to provide delegates and Gambians quality services even beyond the summit. QCEL, the first and only Gambian-owned GSM company, is the brainchild of a young industrious Gambian entrepreneur, Mohamed Jha, who has been setting standards in GSM technology since the establishment of the company on July 1, 2009. Adopting the slogan Sunyobos, a catchphrase in the local world of language, meaning ours, QCEL is a signing embodiment of the entrepreneurial finesse of the country's local talent. And it has over the years proved its market dominance by winning several national and international awards for its outstanding services. As part of civil military cooperation, the Nigeria contingent of the ECOWAS mission in the Gambia on Saturday held a medical outreach, counseling sessions, and presentation of food items to Mile 2 Central Prison. Lena Igwenyiba reports. 
The CIMIC exercise at Mile 2 Central Prison, the country's largest correctional facility, is part of a series of similar exercises conducted by the Nigerian contingent at various locations. Services provided included medical checkups, medication distribution, counseling for psychologically affected inmates, and the donation of food items to supplement existing stocks. Lieutenant Colonel Moreno Joseph Bent, commander of the Nigerian troops in the Gambia, emphasized that such activities are not only part of their peacekeeping mandate, but also crucial humanitarian efforts to promote peace and stability. Uh, we try to always reach people that are unreachable. So, and that is why we deemed it fit that the prisons, which is where we have most of our youths, most of our um, men and women who have one way or the other found themselves there. We don't want them to feel neglected. We also want them to know that they are part of the community so that when they, whenever they come out, they are reintegrated back. And when they are reintegrated back, let them also know that ECOWAS is a, ECOMIG is a symbol of peace. We are not here for insecurity. We are just here to show you the uh, purpose of uh, the ECOWAS mission in the Gambia, which is symbol of peace. Anywhere you see ECOWAS, you know that country is peaceful. Lamin So, Commission of Operations at the Gambia Prison Service, thanked the Nigerian contingent for their valuable services to the inmates. Definitely, here is a place where we have needy people. Maybe we have more needy people that, that here than even Westfield and Kairaba, because these are people whom you know that they cannot go out for themselves, you see, because of they are confined by the law. Be rest assured that we will always remember you in our prayers. We hope this will be uh, something that will continue between the prisons and the, the economy. The CIMIC activities are a vital aspect of the peace-building efforts carried out by ECOWAS forces, showcasing their support and compassion towards the citizens of the Gambia. The Nigerian contingents continue support through such activities, demonstrate their commitment to the welfare of the Gambian people. Reporting for KTV News, I am Lena Iigwenyiba. From that story, we'll now go for a commercial break. But when we return, we have more stories for you. Do stay tuned. The art of juggling is a true spectacle of agility, coordination, and speed. A symbol of progression, precision, and mastery. is like having the juggler in your pocket with lightning fast download and upload speeds you'll easily be able to juggle even the busiest work days whether you're a busy entrepreneur a creative or just someone who wants to stay connected juggle your tasks with ease with Qcell 5g speed the future is here it's fast reliable and efficient. First brought to you by QCell. We innovate, others follow. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you're watching QTV News and I am Asma Uba. Now, the SOS Children's Villages on Friday commenced their Made in Youth Can Network Camp, bringing together 80 young people from various children's villages in the Gambia. Jennifer Sonko reports. Youth CAN is a global partnership program that supports young people at SOS Children's Villages to successfully manage the transition from school to independent adulthood and into the world of work. This initiative reinforces the importance of investing in youth education, training and skills development, targeting young people between 15 to 25 years. The Gambia holds Made in Youth CAN camp, targeting 80 young people from across SOS Children's Villages in the Gambia. Here is Fatule Jalo, Acting Executive Director of the Gambia SOS Children's Villages. The youth camp is designed to support young people in fostering collaboration, cooperation, personal and professional development. So the success of this camp really depends on you, the young people, navigating the wild variations in how people from different backgrounds and groups think, lead, and come up with solutions to common societal problems. 
Youth in the Gambia continue to be disadvantaged in the labor market as youth unemployment rate stands at 42.1%. Youth political representation also remains a setback in the Gambia. Alaji Jaju is the executive director of the National Youth Council. I want to assure you that you know, government, the council, despite our meager resources, we will continue to ensure and realize that yes, there are challenges, yes, there are huge gaps. But we will need to continue at ensuring we address you know, these challenges and these gaps that our young people have to ensure we are able to really reap that demographic dividend. And the focus by government on skills training, on entrepreneurship, it's definitely going to continue because this is going to be the driving force of getting so many other young people or getting so many people outside of poverty that is skills and entrepreneurship will only be the way out and not actually government continuing you know to employ people either as police or as soldiers is not going to solve our problem but we have an opportunity creating these opportunities you know plugging young people into skills plugging you know young people into entrepreneurship this is going to help address the challenges that we have as part of the Youth Can Camp, the SOS Youth Network held its Congress. The outgoing president of the network, Khalilu Turi, delivered his farewell statement. As we gather here for the four-day National Youth Congress, under the team, encouraging innovative thinking and creating solutions to address societal issues affecting young people, I am, full, I am filled with hope and excitement for the future of young people. SOS Children's Villages de Gambia is a non-governmental social development organization with over 41 years of existence in the Gambia. The organization is focused on supporting children and young people without adequate parental care, those at risk of losing care, as well as empowering families and communities to ensure that no child grows up alone. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Basongo. The National Center for Arts and Culture, with support from the Gambia Tourism Board, held a day-long capacity building forum for 50 festival organizers on event planning and management. Mam Sehngom tells us more. The participants in this event are drawn mainly for the urban parts of the country. The aim of the convergence is to assist festival organizers to master the basics of event management, fundraising, branding and programming of festivals. Kodu El Jabang Senor, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, highlights some of the challenges festival organizers face and hopes this forum will help address some of them. It has become clear that some of the festivals fall on the same dates and show the same culture and traditions. This clash of calendars and ubiquity can easily be a drawback because when events clash, the audiences are split, which does not favor good attendance. Therefore, I hope this workshop will help us to look critically at how organizers can better coordinate their events. Hasum Sise, Director General of the National Center for Arts and Culture, outlined the importance of cultural festivals. This is really the first time that um, there has been a coordinated, um, or if you like, um, a deliberate um, effort um, on our side as the NCAC, the Ministry, the Gambia Tourism Board, to um, sort of introduce festival and event organizers to um, the fundamentals of um, what they are doing. Um, in terms of um, trying to introduce to them um, issues on like fundraising, for example, uh, event planning, um, how to you know, make their events visible, you know, how to brand them so that they stand out. Musa Dem is the packaging manager and public relations officer at the Gambia Tourism Board. For us to organize it better and make sure that it has international standings, we'll have to find a way to make sure that we can fund it on our own. So we do it together. How do we raise funds? How do we do the programming better? 
How do we build the infrastructure at the um, festival grounds? And then how do we promote it after that? Cultural festivals showcase the traditions, customs, and cultural practices of a particular region or ethnic group. The events feature performances, exhibits, activities, and food reflecting the distinctive cultural heritage and values of a region or ethnic group. Most festivals are usually held at the same time every year and may also have religious, historical, or social significance. Reporting for QTV News, I am Mam Shehengom. Women suffer from gender bias to unequal access to capital, making it difficult for women-owned businesses to succeed. Now to empower women, Jai Charah Wall Market, basic business and entrepreneurship skills training held an induction ceremony for the fourth cohort of women trainees. Jenna Basonko, again. These women from across the country will go through a three-month intensive training on entrepreneurship practice and skills, marketing strategies, ethics, business plan and proposal writing, amongst others. Many women entrepreneurs, particularly those running small or medium-sized enterprises, often lack mentors and role models within their field. This three-month intensive business and entrepreneurship skills training by Njai Chara Wall Market will bring about networking opportunities and connect them with all the successful women entrepreneurs. This is the fourth batch of women trainees at the Academy. After their graduation, the previous batches were supported to start their own businesses through the provision of capital or merchandise. Here is Motsar, CEO of Jai Chara Wall Market. I opened the training school because I believe these women can work and be successful. We successfully graduated the first, second and third batch, also targeting Fonyi, Farafenye and Basse. I normally give them merchandise to see and they eventually gather profit. All the batches combined made a profit of over $2 million. I am calling on the government of the Gambia to provide these women a market where they can sell their products. Fatima Tajalo was among the second batch to go through the Njai Chara Wall Market Basic Business and Entrepreneurship Skills Training. Through the training, I started my own shop. Whatever I sell is mine. I was working, but I understand that not everyone in the Gambia will be paid a good salary. I now work for myself and make money every day through Njai Chara. Sohna Saho is part of the fourth batch of trainees. She already owns a business, but wants to be more structured in her business approach. I have been following this training for a very long time and learning from it from a distance. I learned that it is meant to support women, and supporting women means you are supporting a whole country. I am a married woman with children. Being in business does not mean that I have the required skills to have a successful business. So, I joined the cohort to improve my business generally. Juggling multiple responsibilities can be difficult for any entrepreneur, but especially women who are often also responsible for childcare and household duties. Through this training, Women will be able to build their multitasking skills for successful businesses. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Vasonko. Well, that's all we have for you in this news bulletin. But before we go, a recap of women news headlines. At the press conference on Monday organized by the Ministry of Information ahead of the Gambia's hosting of the OIC summit, government ministers and the chief executive officer of the OIC Gambia Secretariat updated the media on OIC projects and Gambia's readiness to host the summit. As preparations for the OIC summit in the Gambia intensify, QSEL's Chief Technology Officer Ahmad Jha Monday stressed the company's preparedness to offer delegates innovative quality services. The Nigerian contingent of the ECOWAS mission in the Gambia on Saturday held a medical outreach, counseling sessions and presentation of food items to Maltu Central Prison. The SOS Children's Villages on Friday commenced their Made in Youth Can Network Camp, bringing together 80 young people from various children's villages in the Gambia. The National Center for Arts and Culture held a day-long capacity building forum for 50 festival organizers on event planning and management. That's all we have for you in this news bulletin. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thanks for watching.